Here we are. We're on. All right. Oh, Praise God. the Lord. Everybody, let's get it right. All right. We want to welcome you to Storehouse. I want to welcome all of y'all to Storehouse. We got a house full. We're full. We had lots to eat. Can you tell? No. You see? Nothing. Okay. Anyways, we had lots to eat. We're full. Amen. I want to tell you, you can go out to Storehouse Fellowship, our, our website, which is www.storehousefellowship.com. Find out more about who we are, what makes us roll, and how we, all that kind of stuff. But we're just glad you've tuned in. I'm glad y'all are here tonight. Amen. Amen. Start a watch party. Say something. Let us know you're listening in and where you're listening from. We always love to see our family across the world. Amen. We got people that listen to us from Florida and Oregon and Wisconsin and all over Texas. We got people that listen to us from New Orleans and Mississippi and, and League City and all those things. Amen. Yeah, amen. And God's in the place. Amen. He's yeah. in the house. Yeah. Amen. A couple of announcements. I want to remind everybody that Jerry Don Garner is on Facebook Live pretty much every day around the 11 o'clock hour, 11 a.m., for a word from his word. Amen. So if you want to listen to Jerry, you can go to his Facebook page, Jerry Don Garner. Also, Marcy Hammonds is on Facebook Live on Monday nights and Wednesday nights. Marcy, if you're listening, honey, we miss you tonight. I know she moved this past week, so she's probably trying to get her, her suitcases unpacked and getting settled in. So we miss you, Marcy. Um, Storehouse Fellowship is on YouTube. You can go out to YouTube and search for Storehouse Fellowship and you can watch some of the previous uh, messages out there. If the Holy Spirit does lead you to, you can submit your tax exempt con uh, or tax deductible contributions. Uh, you can send those in through a Venmo. Uh, it's at storehouse underscore fellowship underscore church. Um, or you can just mail those in through snail mail. Amen. Wanted to let everybody know that there is no service. There is no in-person service on Friday, July the 1st. Friday, July the 1st. Okay. Um, prayer requests. I want to let everybody know that now's the time through the message. You can be typing in your prayer requests. At, at worship time, at the, after this message, and through the prayer time, we lift those up, we call them out, we speak Amen. over them, yes. and we believe God to show up and show out in those instances. So if you have a prayer request, please feel free to type those in. We'll be sure to lift those up to the Lord in agreement with you that God will show up and show out. Amen. 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 How about we go to the Lord in prayer? Yes. All right. Father, we just thank you so much that we have an opportunity to suck air and give you praise. There's nothing and there's no one that deserves it more than you. You are awesome, Father. We ask, Father, that from the ceiling to the floor, from the platform to the door, as they say, let your presence saturate this temple. Father, let your presence saturate this temple tonight, oh God. Yes. We ask that you have your way in this service and we'll give you praise. And everybody said. Amen. 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 Well, you know how we do it around this part. Pick up your Bible and let's make this declaration into the heavenlies. This is my Bible, the divinely inspired Word of God, a revelation of who He is and His desire toward me in my life. It is my sword and I use it. What it says I am, I am. What it says I have, I have. What it says I can do, I can do. It is raiment to my spirit matter to my soul, and a lamp to my feet. Through the power of this word, my life is forever changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I believe that. I believe that. Oh, say it like an evangelist. I believe that. Yes. Turn in your sword to Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Chapter 7, verse 14. We're going to get there too. <laughs> Second Chronicles 16 and 9, beginning with verse 9. It says this. Well, when you let me give you a chance to get it. I bet David's already got it up. Paul, if you're listening to us, Paul's on vacation in San Antonio this week. Everybody go, oh. Poor Paul's having to suffer through vacation in San Antonio. <laughs> Poor thing. Paul, if you're listening tonight, we love you and we sure miss you tonight. Amen. Everybody say, we love you, Paul. Love you, Paul. 
Amen. Second Chronicles you, chapter Pablo. 16, verse 9. For is am I in your way? I'm in your way, aren't I? I'll try to be transparent for you. How about that? All right. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. Everybody say strong. Strong. Say it again. Strong. On behalf of those who heart, whose heart is loyal to him. All right, now flip over to the New Testament. Let's go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. We're going to be reading out of the Amplified tonight. Or I am, at least. <laughs> Anyways, so Luke chapter 11 in the Amplified, beginning with verse 5. Luke chapter 11, beginning with verse 5 in the Amplified version, Carol. I love you. All right. Then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine is in it, who is on a journey has, come, has just come to visit me and I, I have nothing to serve him. And from inside, he answers, don't bother me. The door has already been shut and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. Verse 8, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything just because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence and boldness, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. Verse 9, now this is Jesus in telling this parable, right? Yes. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. Verse 10, for everyone who keeps on asking persistently receives, and he who keeps on seeking persistently finds. And to him who keeps on knocking persistently, the door will be opened. What father among you, if his sons asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? Verse 13, if you then, being evil, that is sinful by nature, right? Know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask Him? So the title of my message tonight is this. How much does your yearn churn? How much does your yearn churn? <laughs> See, now I've had this message on my mind for quite a while. Jerry, I've told Jerry about it and he understands but anyway, it's how my mind works, I guess, if anybody did. But I've had this message on my mind for quite some time. And you know, with everything going on in our world at the moment, right, I can understand why the Holy Spirit's put this down in my gizzard when he did. But it is there, and i got to get it out. Amen. So I could, I could go through the laundry list. Everybody understands it. I could go through the laundry list of topics and issues, by, but all you have to do really is turn on the TV every morning, right? And you're fully aware of what's going on. People, people are hurting. Amen. People are scared to death. <clears throat> people who, who make minimum wage or poverty level income, and now they're paying five bucks a gallon for gas. Can you imagine how they feel? Did I lose it? I did. There it is. Thank you, Miss Patty. I was like, I think we're going to have to turn that fan off. Yeah. yeah is there a white remote over there by that cup? A little too strong. Yeah. Well, we'll pause for this commercial break. I'll be right back. <laughs> there you go. I told you I'd be right back, and here I is. There he is. All right. Turn the ceiling fan down and we won't have the sermon flying all over the place. <laughs> all right. Because I looked down and I was like going, that's not where I was. Oh, well. <laughs> People are hurting, Richard. 
asking you what you know, they're, they're, they're torn apart, right? The world is, is really full of, of chaos and division. And it's all driven by fear and continual frustration. Guess where that comes from, Patty? You know where it comes from. The father of lies. Right? So just pick a topic, though, Richard. Every day there seems to be nothing but a whole lot of finger pointing, a whole lot of heated debates, arguments, and useless wranglings, I think the Bible calls it, on what needs to happen or how things need to happen or who is or who shouldn't be responsible for fixing the issue at hand. How many know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes. Right? But when it comes down to it, whatever side of the situation you happen to land on, the question really is the same. Just how bad, how much do you want to fix the issue? Just how much does your yearn churn? churn. You, you, you just want to whine about it a little bit longer, right? Fuss and argue about it more because you can't seem to listen to anything but the sound of your own voice, right? How many know people like that? Just cry about it a little while longer for just a, for just a good photo op, yeah. right? Yeah. Because actual repentance from you would actually require some change. Wow. Ooh. Or do you want to, or are you willing to do whatever it takes to do something about it? Amen. Just how much does your yearn churn? Let me give you an example, and I, I hope they don't mind. I told everybody about this earlier, but Jerry and Linda are some dear, dear friends of ours who are part of Storehouse Fellowship, and they retired some years back from the florist business. All, as all of this horrific events over in Uvalde, Texas, began to unfold, they were so moved to do something to help that they contacted the florist over there, right? The only florist in Uvalde that, I, that I'm aware of, right? And that I understand, and, and asked if they could be of any help. Well, as you can imagine, the business, that florist business, is completely inundated and overwhelmed with floral orders for all of the funerals and memorial services that are going on right now. I think they had four today. So Jerry and Linda, they didn't blink an eye. They went out, they loaded up everything they had, all the floral supplies, floral supplies they had in their garage, threw it all, stuffed it all into their car, and they headed out. And they drove hundreds and hundreds of miles over to Uvalde to volunteer as helpers making all the hundreds and hundreds of floral arrangements needed for the funerals taking place over there for each of the victims of that terrible, horrific tragedy. But also to help a community that is writhing in unimaginable anguish and pain. Can you understand? Amen. Let them know that there are folks in this state and there are folks in this nation who are surrounding them in love and we're willing to do whatever they needed to do to show their support, Amen. right? They didn't think about their age or physical limitations, right? They didn't even think about sleeping conditions, where they would lay their head at night or what they were gonna eat. They just loaded up and left. They just knew the yearning that was churning inside and needed to be responsible to the prompting of the Holy Spirit to help help our family over in Uvalde. They are our family. Amen. Amen. To help our family over in Uvalde who are hurting. And it's been so awesome to hear from Jerry every day of the great things that God is doing over there while they've been there. <clears throat> Jesus told the, the parable, Marianne, of a man who was just as determined, just as desperate, and just as resolute, Richard, on getting what he needed regardless of the time or cost because his yearning <coughs> was churning so greatly. Jesus told us the story of the man who knocked on his friend's door at midnight 
and said, my friend has come for a visit and to stay with me, and I need some bread to feed him. The man cried out. I said, would you just leave me alone? Go away. Shut up. It's midnight. The kids are asleep. Nevertheless, Jesus said that it says the man gave his friend as much bread as he needed, not because he was his friend, but because the man just wouldn't quit asking. Fred! Oh, Fred! I need the bread, Fred. I'm downstairs, Fred. You know, you're, you're, you, I know you're up there, Fred. I know it. I need the bread. I need the bread, Fred. Yeah, I know it's midnight. I know it's midnight, Fred, but you got to come on down. You got to open the door, Fred. I know it's late, but I need the bread. Come on down. Open the door and just, just give me what I need, Fred. Hello? Are you listening to me, Fred? I'll wait here as long as it takes. I ain't going nowhere because, you know, Fred, I really need the bread, Fred. <laughs> Stores are closed. Shamelessly yeah. persistent. Yes. Oh, Fred, I know you're still up there, Fred. I can hear you breathing, Fred. I, yeah, I hear you, Fred. I need the bread. I got a friend who's hungry. I need the bread, Fred. Open the door. How big is your want to? Yeah. How much mail does your yearn churn? Just how bad, Patty, do you want an answer for that problem? How shamelessly persistent are you willing to be? And you know, sometimes the answer, it doesn't come when we think it should, right? Sometimes it takes a while to get there. In Daniel chapter 10, Daniel was praying and fasting for three whole weeks before the angel even showed up. And you know what the angel told him? The angel told him in Daniel 10, Chapter, 12, of chapter 10, verses 12 and 30, he said, Do not be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart on understanding this, see, Daniel was all upset about what he was reading. Because he was coming to the end of the, of the time that they were supposed to be in captivity, and he was like, upset. Anyways, you can read it for yourself. Anyways, he said, For from the first day that you set your heart on understanding this, and on humbling yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I've come in response to your words. Well, why weren't you here before? You were supposed to be here immediately. Right? Can you just imagine how Daniel might have felt? And the angel said in verse 13, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was standing in opposition to me for 21 days. God hears your cry Amen. the moment you utter that prayer. Yes. Yes. The moment you speak it out. Amen. Are you willing though to wait for the answer no matter how long it takes? That's the hard part sometimes, right? Yes. Yes. Some folks get angry and they get impatient trying to take matters into their own hands. I've been guilty, Bobby. How about you? Yeah. Taking matters into their own hands because they're not willing to wait for the answer. Their want to doesn't want to wait to. Right? Mm -hmm. Some folks dream and, and pray for God to deliver them out of debt. But are you willing to quit spending what you don't really have? Are, are, are you willing to, are you determined enough to put the plastic away? Hmm. You know that mess of debt? I'm going to talk to you, Patty. It's not you. But you know that mess of debt that you've raked up, Patty? It didn't get there overnight. That's right. And it's going to take some patient persistence yes. at getting out of that hole. Amen. Are you determined enough with your finances then to be a, 
A giver first. Oh, Ethel, I knew he was going to talk about giving. All pastors know this. All they talk about giving. Hold up, cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> Some folks are tighter than the frogs, but with their money, I said it again. There you go. Anyways, and they wonder why God doesn't bless their finances. Yes, really. Yeah. Are Be a giver first. Yeah. I'm not talking about, about just tithing to the church, though I could, but I'm not. I'm talking about just being a giver because that's the principle that God has promised he would bless. Why? Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will men give back to you. For with the same standard of measure you use, it's going to be measured to you in return. Be a giver. Yes, thank you. How much does your yearn churn? Don't be stingy. You know, some folks are, are desperate to save their marriage. But are you willing to say, I'm sorry first? And move on without holding on to that grudge for the next 16 weeks? Are you determined enough to just shut your mouth and bite your tongue and quit poking the bear over and over and over and over and over again? You married that old buzzard. You know what sets that person off. Why do you keep doing it? Why do you keep doing it? Oh my and then pray for God to save your marriage. Waiting. You know, there's pers there's power in persistent Amen. patience. Oh, yeah. Amen. And prayer. Right? And prayer. Just how much does your yearn churn? Bread. I'm still here, Fred. <coughs> oh, Fred, I see your beady little eyes poking through that window looking down at me. I know you're there. Fred, I need the bread, Fred. You might as well just come on down, Fred, here, because uh, I ain't going anywhere, Fred. Hello, Fred, I know you're hearing me. You might as well come on down and give me the bread. I need bread, Fred. Some folks struggle. Some folks struggle with being free from drugs and alcohol. You need a pen? Yes, sorry. Mine's in the bowl behind me. Thank you. Oh, I didn't know. Some folks struggle with being free from drugs and alcohol. Some folks struggle with just living a godly life. Because for some, it's a lot harder than it seems, right? But it's really not. That's the, th that's the odd part about it. It's so easy to live up in God's world. Amen. And it all comes down to this, though, Richard. How much does your yearn churn to fix the situation? Waiting however, however long it takes. You know, that's where the meaning of long-suffering comes in. You know what I'm talking about? long Suffering. Well, they've been going to church for six months and they still, I smell the nightclub on them when they walk in the door. Y'all know how that is? Y'all, y'all, y'all know who I, what, mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Long suffering. Long suffering. And see, we're a society that demands instant gratification. You know, every spring, Miss Debbie and I plant a little garden of vegetables out back. It's really, Patty, it's really just a bunch of pots. But, but we like to call it a garden. But okay. It, but, but we have these tomatoes growing out there. Okay. We have these tomatoes growing out there. And do you know, it takes those things forever to grow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Of course, I like tomatoes. I like tomatoes. Salt and pepper. Oh, hallelujah. Anyways. Uh, and, and I'm watching these things grow, and they're taking forever to grow. There's some out there, and I want so bad, Julian, I want so bad 
They're only about like this. And I want so bad to go out there and pick them. But I gotta wait. Mm -hmm. I gotta wait. They're not ripe. They're not ready to be picked. I, I know if I picked them, Bobby, that if I harvested those tomatoes too soon, they wouldn't taste right. Come on. Probably make me sick. Probably make me sick. So guess what I gotta do, Jerry? Gotta I gotta wait. wait. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. I gotta wait. Or either go to the store. Well, there you go. I'm persistently, persistently waiting yeah. for the harvest of the blessing that I can see with my eyes is coming down the road into existence. But I still gotta wait, guys. Yes. I may not have it yet, Richard, but I know it's coming. Right. All three of them. They'll be gone in five minutes. You know what I'm talking about. But I can see it. Oh, that takes me back. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? And then some people want to, but when it comes right down to it, their want to doesn't want to work to. They want the blessing, but they don't want the they don't want to be inconvenienced. They don't want to do any of the work or exhort, ex, ex, exhort any level of commitment that's required to obtain the thing. Proverbs 13 and 4 in the Amplified says, The soul, the appetite of the lazy person craves and gets nothing, for lethargy overcomes ambition. Oh, wow. But the soul, the appetite of the diligent who works willingly is rich and abundantly supplied. Amen. When I was younger, well, I had, I had a pretty difficult time applying myself in school. Uh, there, it's an understatement, Bobby. Hey, you know, I there were a lot of reasons, there were a lot of reasons that played into all that. Excuses is what it amounted to. Right. But mainly it was because my want to wasn't willing to work to. Oh, I got by. I ended up with two master's degrees and, and a bachelor's degree. I'm all right. I'm sitting real nice with certificates. I got enough. I got by. Back then, I did by the skin of, hair of my chinny chin chin. I did good in music and I did good in choir and all those things. But it wasn't until I decided to fully commit to learning and studying that I was able to complete all my college education and receive the rewards for my efforts. And it was only by applying myself, really this is the odd part about it, it was only through applying myself, Luann, that, that I, in those core curriculums, right, that I actually learned and discovered my ability to write. I love writing. You know, my tang gets tangled all the time when I try to talk. You'll get that in a minute. Anyway, but I, 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 it does. Extemporary <coughs> thinking is just not really one of my fortes, right? That's why I have a lot of notes. But I can write until the cows come home. And I'd have never known that if I didn't start applying myself to learning. When you're yearning when your yearn churns enough, right? When you want to enough, when you're determined enough to be persistent enough, you'll get up off your blessed assurance enough and do something about your issue. Amen. Maybe it's, maybe it's just getting mad enough at the devil for everything he keeps throwing your way. When are you going to have enough? Maybe it's being disgusted enough to break from, free from or walk away from a disgusting habit. For years, I was a smoker. Y'all have heard my story about all that. For years, I was a smoker. I, and I've told you the story about Miss Rousseau. She was, God rest her soul, she was my Spanish teacher in college. Miss Rousseau, I, 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 now I could tell you how God used her to completely change my life. 
She, but she, she was a tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled, Pentecostal, Spanish-speaking woman. And she changed my life. But we both smoked cigarettes. Now, look, opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody's got one, and some are more outies than innies about smoking. I got it, but we ain't going there, right? I, 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 she'd say, Mr. Richard would say, I don't believe smoking will send you to hell, but it'll sure make you smell like you've been there to visit. <laughs> And you know, I tend to agree with her. I tend to agree with her. You know, Pastor John Osteen, Pastor John Osteen used to tell the story of his mother, Ellie. Now, if you, you may have heard this story. I don't know. But Pastor John would tell the story of his mother, Ellie, right? And she used to dip snuff. And John used to say how through years and years and years, his dad would go around the house for a year saying, Ellie, please quit dipping snuff. Ellie, please quit dipping snuff. Please quit dipping snuff. Ellie, I can't stand to kiss you when you're chewing that stuff. Please quit <laughs> dipping. I mean, can you just imagine kissing? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Well, one day, one day, John's dad passed away. John's dad passed away. And Ellie found herself alone. Right? John said after a while, she got a little more lonely. And she decided that she wanted to find herself another husband. John said, he said it like this. He said, Pastor John said, she set her cap on finding another man. Right? John said, so after a bit, she found one. Right? He was 18 years her younger. Right? But oh, Ellie, Ellie knew if he found out that she dipped snuff, he'd have nothing to do with her from then on. So guess how long it took Sister Ellie to quit dipping snuff? Yeah. Overnight. Uh, Mui pronto. Yeah. Her want to was willing to do the work to. Oh, yeah. Right? How much does your yearn Turn. <laughs> Just how determined are you to finally do something about that issue you've been carrying around or putting up with for far too long? What was it that we've talked about in recent weeks? Hebrew 12 that says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, stripping off every unnecessary weight and sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, looking away from all that stuff that will distract us. Yes. And focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Get your eyes off the problem and start focusing on Jesus. Quit telling God how big your mountain is and start telling your mountain how big your God is. Amen. Amen. I think of the woman with the issue of blood. I think of the woman with the issue of blood. For years, she'd been to every doctor. She'd spent all the money, all the money she had and was never any better. Only worse and worse. But as exhausted as she was, Richard, <coughs> and having tried everything she knew to do, right, she was still able to shamelessly be persistent enough to press. Yes. To press through the crowd yes. to touch the hem of his garment. Yes. Paul said in Philippians 3, 12 and 14, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may obtain, lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting all those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press 
Everybody say, I press. I press. Toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Your issue may not be physical, but you, but you may find yourself completely exhausted from fighting that issue that has overwhelmed you and stolen life from your spirit. Press. Press. Begin to press through the crowd. Press through the interference and touch the hem of his garment. Press on. Psalm 103 says, oh, Bless yes. the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. In verse 3, you may be struggling with the disease of fear and anxiety. Now listen to what I'm talking You may be struggling with a disease of fear and anxiety. The, the disease of anger and hate about all the things going on in this world that people are having to, to endure in Uvalde or across the nation or across the world. You may be fighting the disease of unforgiveness. Hello? The disease of sin or an immoral lifestyle. Diseases that just continue to eat away at who you are on the inside, day after day after day. But praise God. We serve a God who forgives all of our iniquities and heals all the diseases. All those things that eat at you and eat you and take away from you and rob you from living a life of victory. Amen. Amen. Shameless persistence. Shameless persistence. Fred, I'm still here, Fred. I ain't leaving until I get the bread, Fred. I know you're up there. Might as well come on down. I'm still waiting. I think of blind Bartimaeus. A beggar sitting on the road along, alone along, on the side of the road, right? He heard a bunch of commotion going on and he asked what was happening. And the people said, hush up, old man. Jesus is coming by. He said, and the Bible says he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people looked at him and said, dude, would you just shut up? Would you just sit there and be quiet? You street beggar. I mean, we'll, we'll let you know if any of this ever involves you. You just sit there and do in your place and do your thing, whatever you do, and be quiet. That's the meal version, right? But the Bible says in Mark 10, verse 48, he says, when they told him that, he cried out all the more. Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Amen. Mm. Shameless persistence. Jerry, how much does your yearn churn? Jesus, I have got to have my healing. I have got to receive my blessing. I have got to have my answer from you. Fred! Oh, Fred, I've got to have the bread, Fred. I'm not leaving here until you come down and open this door and give me what I know you have for me. Hello? Yeah. It has my name on it, Fred. And I'm not leaving. Fred, I need the bread. And you know, people want change. People want change. They want the blessing of God in their situation but their want to can't seem to commit to. Second Chronicles 16 and 9, we read earlier, says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. The eyes 
of the Lord move to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to their political party. Whose heart is loyal to their government. Whose heart is loyal to their family. Mm. Whose heart is loyal to their friends whose heart is loyal to their job, mm -mm. whose heart is loyal to him. Amen. In 2 Chronicles 16, God spoke through Hanani, the seer, Hanani, or however you pronounce it, to tell King Asa of Judah that God was looking for people who were loyal to him. And he said, in this, dude, you have done Foolishly, you can read it for yourself. Second Chronicles chapter 16. He said, in this you've done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. Too many folks like King Asa of Judah like playing their games with God. Mm. They want God in their life. They want the favor of God. Right? They want the donut and coffee on Sunday morning and to be entertained for about an hour or so. And they prefer, but they prefer to have a concept of God as some kind of a heavenly Santa Claus, right? Mm -hmm. That they can just pull out when things in their life seem to get a little bit too tough for them to handle. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Live their own way, right? Yeah. Do their own thing, follow their own lifestyles live by their own rules, and God's grace will take us all up to heaven someday. Mm. Can I tell you what Isaiah said about it? And Isaiah, you know I'm going to have something to say about it from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Isaiah said about it in chapter 4, verse 1, Isaiah prophesied, in that day, Seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we'll eat our own food and we'll wear our own apparel. Only, only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. Can I tell you something straight up? Honey, it just don't work that way. You can't be foolish with your relationship toward God and expect to live under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. Amen. God is looking and searching for a people whose eyes are set on him, whose hearts are completely his and who have perfect, who are perfect toward him and who are fully committed to yes. him. Why? Because he wants to show himself strong on your behalf. So how much does your yearn churn? When your yearning is churning enough inside, when you're determined to be shamelessly persistent enough, no matter how long it takes, you can wait for it. You can work for it. And you can commit to it. God said it, God said it like this in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Here it is, Patty. All right, all right. If my people, even talking to the world, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Hallelujah. Amen. Just how much does your yearn churn to fix the situation. Not just at the gas pump, but spiritually for our nation. Amen. How much does your yearn churn? Hell's too hot. Time's too short. Eternity's too long. And your responsibility is too great in this hour to deny yourself anything less than but complete victory over the enemy. Amen. 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 The devil's going to tell you, well, you'll never be able to make that. You'll never be able to do that. You're going to fail. 
How many know what I'm talking about, right? You're not qualified. I don't know how many times the devil told me that 12 years ago when we started Storehouse, Mel. 12 years ago, and we're still going strong, Patty. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. I don't have a big church because I don't want a big church. God told me I ain't going to build a big church with Storehouse. That's not what it's about. Anyways, but you know what? That's what the devil would say. Yes. You can't. But God says you, you can, can do all things, things through Christ, Christ who gives you strength. strength. Amen. When your yearning is churning great enough, here it is. Fred, I need the bread, Fred. Still down here, Fred. Regardless of what your pastor says, well, we don't do that. We don't believe that. How many know what I'm talking about? Oh, I yeah. do know. Yeah. I do know. I regardless know. of what your pastor says, I was lost. regardless of what your church says, yeah. regardless of what your religion yeah. says, yeah. regardless of what your family says, what your friends say, or what the world says every time you walk out the front door, regardless of what the devil whispers in your ear, Jesus said, your shameless persistence will be rewarded. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Jesus said in Luke 10, 11, verse 10, he said, everyone who keeps asking persistently yeah. receives. And yeah. he who keeps on seeking persistently finds. And to him who keeps on knocking persistently, the door will be opened to everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Everybody say, that's me. Everybody. Everybody. Everyone. Who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Amen. Fred, you got to open the door, Fred. I'm still here, buddy. I need the bread, Fred. How much does your yearn churn? I told y'all before about Homer. Did I? Y'all might remember Homer. Pastor John Osteen said, told this story one time about Homer. Yes. This woman, if I can get to, I'm going to probably read it because it kind of gets it. This woman had a drunken husband, drunkard husband, right? His name was Homer. And she tried everything she could to get Homer to quit drinking liquor. Oh, wow. When she, well, she knew every night, Bobby, she knew every night, oh, Homer would cut through the graveyard on his way home from the pub. <laughs> at about midnight, round about midnight. Oh, wow. So she called, she called the grave digger. Wow. And she had the grave digger build a great big hole right in the path she knew Homer was going to be crossing through that graveyard. <laughs> round about midnight. And that night, it just so happened, Mel, it just so happened that another man came walking through the graveyard first. And sure enough, in he went. He went into the hole. Well, that man, he tried and he tried. He tried and clawed and tried to climb and do everything he could to get out of that hole, but it couldn't get anywhere, right? So the man said, you know, it, it's late. I'm exhausted. It's cold. It's dark. I'm in a graveyard. I'm just going to go over here and sit down in the corner and just sit there nice and quiet until daylight. Somebody will come around about that time and they'll be able to help me out, right? <coughs> So sure enough, the man goes over there and he sits down in the corner of that hole, right? But poor Homer. <laughs> Here comes Homer, a little after midnight, drunkard and cooter brown. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. And zip, in he went. <laughs> Homer tried, and he tried. He climbed, and he clawed, and he jumped, and he cried out 
to, to, for help. But there was nothing and there was no one, Julian, that could help him. Poor Homer. He was scared to death. He couldn't see his hand in front of his face. It was cold. It was damp. There was no moon, so there was no light. He, and, and he was just shaking in fear. He was not only in a hole, but he was in a hole in the graveyard at midnight. <laughs> Scared to death. Shaking in fear. And after, after a few minutes, Julian, after a few minutes, the, the man sitting over in the corner, <laughs> knowing what was happening, and being able to relate to poor Homer. <coughs> couldn't help. Couldn't help but, but feel the need to speak up. In a real graveyard-like voice, he spoke slow and low. You can't get out of here. But he did. <laughs> Homer got out of there and licked and he split. <laughs> When you're yearning, I'm going to burn on a milk. Anyways, tip your waitress. When your yearning is churning greatly enough, when your determination is strong enough, the miracles can happen. Amen? Amen. I'll close. Luke 18 tells the parable of a persistent widow of a persistent widow. It says in Luke 18, verses 2 through 5, it says, There was a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. There wasn't a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. Right? And he would not, he would not for a while. But afterward, he said, within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by continual, by her continual coming, she wears me down. She wearies me, right? She kept coming to him and coming to him and coming to him and finally he said, get this woman off my back, Right? Luke 11, Jesus said, Fred got his bread because of his shameless persistence. Both were determined to ask and keep on asking. To keep, to seek and keep on seeking. To knock and keep on knocking. Jesus said, everyone who asks and keeps on asking, everyone who seeks and keeps on seeking. Everyone who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door will be opened. Yes. Well, I've been asking, Pastor. I've been seeking, Pastor. I've been knocking, and and and, uh, and it's just I, I still haven't received my answer. Well, let's just ask yourself an honest question. Ask yourself: Is what my yearning is churning for in line with the Word of God? That's a hard question because you know what? Self gets in the way a lot of times. Oh, yes. Are you asking the, for the wrong things? Are you asking for the wrong reasons? The bread, the bread, Bobby, belongs to those who are determined to be persistently patient in their asking, who don't give up, who are determined to believe God for the impossible. Amen. Amen. Now, it's worth noting, I guess, that, you know, Fred's friend, he didn't burn Fred's house down just because he didn't get everything he thought he deserved right away. Right? A lot of protests and violent stuff going on. And he didn't paint Fred. He didn't paint Fred as some evil pig to the rest of the neighborhood. Right? 
just because Fred didn't want to wake up the kids in the household to get to get his friend the bread again. Because so y'all know what it's like when you get the kids finally asleep. Mm -hmm. Heaven on earth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> what a blessed hour you it check, is you when you can finally <laughs> say they've fallen off to sleep. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> of course, he didn't want to wake them up. Really? But there's value in being persistently patient yes. with your asking. Yes. So the question is, how much does your yearn churn? Jesus said in verse 13, he said this, if you then, then being evil, that is sinful by nature, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask? See, if you'll just be determined enough to not give up, to take hold of the promises of God and call out your request. Oh, Fred, I'm still here, Fred. I ain't leaving till I get what has my name on it. I know you have it just for me. I'm not leaving, Fred. For those who take hold of the promises of God and call out your request and are shamelessly persistent, the bread is coming your way. The Bible says in Psalm 37 and 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Amen. How much does your yearn churn? How great is your desire to have peace in the midst of all the storms that are going around you and surrounding you and trying to overwhelm you? To have joy in your heart when sorrows like sea billows roll. How much does your yearn churn to know Jesus as your Savior? If your desire is to be free from the shackles of the enemy on your life, you can be free today by placing Jesus as Lord over your life. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. All you have to do is bow your head and pray, Jesus, I'm sorry for the way I've been living. I want to know the peace and safety of being hidden in you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I accept the forgiveness you freely provided yes. for me. I acknowledge you as Lord over my life, and I ask you to come into my heart today. Jesus. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Miss Debbie and I, I'm so... Uh, we're so glad that, to, that you've prayed that prayer. We would love to hear from you. You can call us on our cell phone, which is 713-557-8423. Or you can write us at 2102 Noblewood Court. Noblewood is one word. Noblewood Court, League City, Texas, 77573. Yes, amen. What is your phone number? 713 five five seven eight four two three miss debbie and i are so honored to have every one of y'all in our home every day. <coughs> we're so honored and delighted to invite you and have you into our home every week through facebook we want to thank you for being here and we want to thank you for being with us online until next week be blessed share the love of jesus Stay safe. Amen. And let's be determined to win in yeah. Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap.